I posted a video about a month ago titled, West Virginia Judge Pulls Gun, Then It Gets Weird. This was about West Virginia Circuit Court Judge David Hummel. I'll put the link in the description to that first video. That video involved recent allegations from a lawyer that a judge had pulled out a gun in the courtroom while on the bench during a hearing, displaying it and setting it on the bench, pointed in the direction of the lawyer who ultimately complained about it, sparking investigations, media reports, and threats of a lawsuit. There's been a few updates in the reporting since the first video. There was an insinuation that video footage existed in this case. So now that's been confirmed and some footage has been released pursuant to a FOIA request and I have it and I'll show it to you. But there's been a few other updates as well. The Daily Beast has been reporting on this as has been the West Virginia record. In their August 18th story, the Daily Beast reported that they obtained the video which they had previously hinted existed, and then it confirms via the court surveillance footage that Judge Hummel indeed displayed a pistol in his courtroom in Wetzel County, West Virginia during a hearing on March 12th. This was a hearing involving controversial litigation pertaining to gas and oil rights. The case pitted gas and oil companies and their Texas lawyers against local landowners. In their original July 16th story, the Beast alleged that Judge Hummel quote, whipped out his handgun waved it in the air and left it on the bench with the barrel pointed directly at the corporate lawyers who had irritated him. The allegations had been provided to them by Lauren Varnado, the Texas lawyer who had been standing at the podium, allegedly, when the incident occurred. According to the Beast reporter, this is Judge Hummel's initial phone response to these allegations. There is no incident. I absolutely, categorically deny I had a gun that day in the courtroom, he said. It was just me and the attorneys. I had no reason to have a firearm that day. I've never shown a gun in my courtroom to anybody. I don't want them to know that I have it. I do not display my firearm at any time during trial. Then the reporter wrote, minutes later, the judge called back and said, well, he now recalled having a holstered handgun on him beneath his robe during the trial the previous week. He maintained, however, that it never came out of the holster during the trial. Then the judge apparently called back a third time, according to the report, now acknowledging that he showed something to the attorneys that day in the courtroom, but it, it wasn't a gun. He claimed it was a small red first aid kit. So the local prosecuting attorney, Timothy Hott, has already responded to the existence of this footage. He stated in a letter to the complaining attorney that he has reviewed the video and that he sees no criminal wrongdoing. Quote, what I saw on the videotape was Judge Hummel displaying his firearm for a few seconds. It did not appear to me that he pointed his firearm at the complaining lawyer or threatened the complaining lawyer with the same. The prosecuting attorney, at the very least here, has represented that he has concluded that a gun was indeed displayed by the judge in the courtroom during a hearing. This, of course, contradicts the judge's own statements to the reporter, assuming that he actually made them. In a follow-up letter to Varnado, the prosecutor further remarked that he found nothing in that footage that constitutes a violation of West Virginia's criminal code, and that he didn't see or hear a threat, nor did he observe the judge directly point the firearm at Varnado. So let's take a look at the actual surveillance footage released by the Daily Beast. Judge Hummel is seen starting the court session around 9 a.m. One minute into the hearing, he is seen briefly waving it in the air as he speaks to the lawyers. What do you think? Are the allegations confirmed? Let's review the initial allegations. The initial Daily Beast story alleged that Judge Hummel, quote, whipped out his handgun, waved it in the air, and left it on the bench with the barrel pointed directly at the corporate lawyers who had irritated him. Remember, Judge Hummel, according to the original story, repeatedly told the Daily Beast, quote, it never happened. They said that when they reached the judge by phone, he initially professed shock at the allegations. The footage corroborates the complaining attorney's initial allegations to some extent. It shows him pull out the gun and wave it around for a second, and then it set it on the bench. And then, is it pointed in the direction of the attorney? It's hard to tell from the video, but it doesn't look like it to me, at least not in this segment of footage. 
To the extent that the judge has indeed denied displaying the gun in the courtroom, the footage appears to completely contradict his recollection of the events. Now, whether or not a crime was committed by the judge, judicial ethics violations may have been committed, and an investigation by the judicial disciplinary authorities is ongoing. The Daily Beast quoted Rutgers Law School professor Ronald Chin, who also criticized the local prosecutor for, quote, trying to run interference for the judge. This is what he said. Whether what he did would have satisfied the criminal definition of brandishing or not seems to be besides the point. To make contact with the potential, he's talking about the prosecutor here, to make contact with a potential witness, but one who has not even complained, and essentially try to waver off, does not seem to be appropriate. After the first story was published, Lauren Varnado received a letter from attorneys representing the judge that suggested he might be suing her personally for speaking out about what happened. They've issued a cease and desist letter, but to my knowledge, no lawsuit has been filed. Now, the local media reports the West Virginia Record has reported on other issues now that have come out surrounding Judge Hummel, including accusing children of lying in a neglect case, as well as allegations he may have violated state law and personally obtaining oil and gas interest. So in a recent state Supreme Court opinion, Judge Hummel was chastised by the court for improper behavior by conducting interviews of children wherein he accused a seven-year-old of lying, reducing the child to tears, and then, according to the court, appears to have coerced an even younger child to try to get the child to implicate the parent in a plot to fabricate allegations of abuse. In another recent story, it was reported that Judge Hummel had obtained oil and gas interests while serving as a court official. And state law expressly prohibits court officials from obtaining rights to minerals from tax deeds. And then he presided over oil and the, this oil and gas dispute involving Varnado, in which he apparently failed to disclose any interests and also failed to recuse himself. So the judicial disciplinary investigation here is ongoing, and I have no doubt there will be another update to come. Legitimacy is the currency of the courts. Setting aside the issues of whether prosecutors are going to criminally charge their fellow elected officials, evidence that a sitting judge has lied about allegations of misconduct call into question thousands of pending and former court cases involving that judge. This needs to be resolved. We'll just have to wait and see the results of the pending judicial disciplinary investigation. As always, thanks for watching. You'll find more information at the link below to my blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. If you have a video you want me to see, please use the submission link in the description or at the blog. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss updates and future videos. Please like, share, and comment about this video and others. It helps the channel. It also helps our mission of exposure, education, and accountability. If you want to support the channel, please consider clicking the join button on YouTube and becoming a channel member or sponsor. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it. See you next time.